Just a short time from now, the British Parliament is set to begin a key Brexit vote, deciding if it'll accept the agreement negotiated by Prime Minister Theresa May's government and the European Union. Now, earlier, the British Prime Minister warned that without support for her deal, Brexit could be lost. And the pressure is on. There are only 17 days left until the transition period begins with or without a deal. The UK triggered a two-year clock when it invoked the EU exit clause, and there's no sign that the European Union is interested in ex extending that deadline. Now, one key issue in this whole thing is this. This is the border along Northern Ireland, this part here, which is part of the United Kingdom, and the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country that will remain part of the European Union. Lawmakers created the so-called backstop provision, ensuring that there would be no hard border between the Irelands. But Pro-Brexit politicians don't want this to become a permanent thing. Now, in most other situations, a physical barrier of some type would, with border checkpoints would be put in place to regulate the flow of goods and people. But in Ireland, things are different because of history. A physical barrier defined some of the most painful and deadly parts of the 20th century on the island. Many in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland say that any border checkpoints could reignite tensions that have been dormant since the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. So to head off that possibility, the British and the European Union negotiators created a backstop provision. It keeps Britain in the European Customs Union, so there'd be no border checks between Northern Ireland and Ireland, but Britain wouldn't be part of the larger EU in terms of trade policy, so that undercuts some of the key arguments for leaving uh, the EU. And while some European officials have suggested that only Northern Ireland participate in the backstop, British politicians have rejected that because it would effectively create a border between the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland in the Irish Sea, isolating Northern Ireland and put potentially pushing it closer to reunification with the Republic of Ireland, which, as I mentioned, is part of the European Union. Joining me now from London, NBC News Chief Global Correspondent Bill Neely. Uh, Bill, first of all, to today's vote, uh, any expectations about how this is going to go? Is Theresa May finally going to win a vote? Uh, I think the short answer, Ali, is no. Remember, just a few weeks ago in January, she lost the vote on the deal, exactly the same thing as is going to be put to the House uh, tonight, by 230 votes. That was the biggest defeat in 100 years. I don't think she'll be defeated by that margin tonight, but it will probably still be in three figures. It would take an absolute miracle uh, for her to win. The arithmetic simply doesn't add up. Look, it was all looking actually quite good for her this morning. She came back from Strasbourg, having negotiated late last night with European Union leaders and had got to what seemed to be a concession, some kind of legal assurance that the UK wouldn't be trapped forever in this arrangement, the backstop, uh, a, a customs union. But then, crucially, her attorney general, Geoffrey Cox, said in mid-morning uh, that while the assurances had reduced the risk that the UK would be permanently trapped uh, in a customs union. It hadn't got rid of the risk altogether. So suddenly, the fancy wrapping paper and the new red ribbon that she'd put around the deal simply fell away. And as a result, uh, a few hours ago, her main political allies in Parliament, the Northern Ireland Unionists, the DUP, said that they wouldn't support the deal and many Conservatives within the hardline Brexiteer bloc will either vote against or will abstain. So I think uh, probably, and, and I, I'm not one to predict anything with mm -hmm. great certainty, but I think probably this, uh, the vote is lost and the deal as it stands at the moment is dead. The big question is, well two, number one is Theresa May politically dead? And number two, what on earth happens next? We're, we are uh, close to 30 years away from the worst of the violence in Northern Ireland. I, I've tried to explain as best I can. How serious is it an issue uh, if they don't work this out and there is going to, a border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland? Well, uh, opinion in Northern Ireland, especially along the border on both sides of the border, is absolutely clear. They do not want what's called a hard border. And what that means is customs posts, uh, customs posts possibly uh, protected by police checkpoints, uh, if it came to it, by army checkpoints. Uh, there are, uh, you know, unreconstructed terrorists out there who would only be too happy to attack those posts. And you could have the beginning of 
the war again, the troubles, and nobody, nobody on the island of Ireland wants that. Uh, you know, ironically, a lot of people in Northern Ireland are not represented by the DUP, and they would be perfectly happy to see uh, mm -hmm. the UK remain. In fact, they voted for the UK to remain in the European Union. But it looks like, you know, March the 29th is coming fast. So just very briefly, Ali, the next step tomorrow, they will vote yes or no on no deal. In other words, will the UK crash out of the European Union? And then on yeah. Thursday, they will vote probably on whether or not to extend Brexit. In other words, delay it. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.